From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. If ever there were a time that I'm happy to be with you, it's now. Because if ever were, there were a time that we were going to address a subject that's so important, it's the subject we'll address today. And it's one that Jack wanted to do. Socialism Exposed. In fact, you know, he even gave the name to the program today before the Lord took him home. He said, you know, Rexel, we need to do a program on socialism. It's coming very soon, and I'm going to put him on in just a few moments. And you'll see what he said 10 years ago. I can't believe that we can go back that far, and already he was seeing the importance of exposing socialism. And we're going to really zero in on that today. And uh, I'm just delighted and grateful to the Lord for our guest that was able to be with us today. Dr. Frank Wright, and he was the CEO and president of the National Religious Broadcasters, and he is now president and CEO of the D. James Kennedy Ministries. And uh, Dr. Wright, it is so good to have you with us today. Rexella, it's a pleasure. I'm very excited about this program and for your visionary following through on Jack's concerns all those many years ago about the impact of socialism today. Yes, it's here. I mean, the thing that Jack and I talked about 10 years ago, I see all around me, and we're going to be uh, showing you that today. But take a look at what Jack had to say on camera about 10 years ago concerning socialism. I can't believe it. Take a look. Rexella, trouble is coming with this movement towards socialism and the movement of atheists who want to do away with the day of prayer and all the rest. And th the hate language thing that the UN is proposing so that you'll not be able to say that Jesus is the only way. And that is the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 33, 12 says, uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Remember the first commandment in Exodus 20, verse 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. America was established as a Christian nation. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, great men of God. What's happening in America? You can't mention God in the schools. You can't read Bibles or pray. Why? Because they can't take the word of God. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, Genesis 1-1. We didn't evolve from monkeys. That's a lot of monkey business. And I'll tell you, these atheists want to get rid of it all. The Bible and prayer. America's in trouble, as you'll hear today. Can you believe it? And 10 years ago that Jack would actually recognize the danger of socialism coming into America. And he ended by saying, or beginning, we're in trouble. I'm going to ask our guest if we are in trouble. And I'm going to call him Frank. He said that I could call him by his first name. <laughs> yes. Frank, are we in trouble here in the United States? Well, Rexella, I think we are. I think we're living in a time where socialism is just an emblem of our drift away from God. We're living in a nation that seems to be headlong, running headlong in a flight away from any notion of biblical morality, or purity, and socialism is really a reflection of that. It's, a, it's what I like to call the gospel of envy. It's fomenting in the hearts of people a desire for things that they haven't earned, that they haven't worked for, and a desire, quite frankly, to steal them from others. And the question is often asked, is, uh, is socialism even a biblical idea? Well, the basic definition of socialism is that the, the control and the ownership of all goods and means of production in society, including your money. And so if the government owns and controls everything, right. then there is no such thing as private ownership. But the scriptures clearly teach that that's true. The commandment thou shalt not steal means that you're stealing something that belongs to somebody else. Thou shalt not covet. 
You're coveting things that belong to someone else. The scriptures teach the ownership of private property. Socialism says the scriptures are wrong. Well, you know what? Another uh, question that comes to my mind here. Uh, socialism is a lot like communism. It's not communism, but is it leading toward communism, Frank? Uh, that's a, a question many people don't ponder. It may be the most important question to ask because socialism is using uh, Trojan horse kinds of language these days. Bernie Sanders, a presidential candidate in the last two election cycles, calls himself a democratic socialist. But socialism has no democratic notions about it. In fact, when they're honest, people who are proponents of socialism say it's only a way station on the way to full communism. And so socialism sounds fine to young people who've never seen the effects of it. It sounds fine to people who don't know how many people died at the hands of their own socialist government, but it is uh, the road to communism. It's a byway. It's a way station on the way to communism. That's true. Absolutely true. And you know, I love, um, we've been in 50 countries, my husband and I were in 50 countries before he went home to be with the Lord. And every time I would come home, Frank, I'd get off the plane, I wanted to kiss the ground because I love the United States. And we have in the United States something called a democracy. A democracy. Now, did God provide us the opportunity to know what a democracy is? What is a democracy, anyway? Well, you know, the scriptures are basically silent right. on forms of government. It, uh, the the, the gov nations governed by kings are not criticized in the scripture. And so the form is not necessarily the issue. It's ultimately who do you worship? Because governments that seek to acquire more and more power unto themselves, which is what socialism is, it's the accretion mm. of power. The political commentator Charles uh, Krauthammer, before he died, said he had studied socialist political thinking and he said the only principle you can really derive from it is that socialists should be in charge. Ah. It's about the power of it. But socialist governments wanting to have power will brook no other competing authorities. And so, which is why they're opposed to the church, they're opposed to uh, marriage, they're opposed to parental authority and education over children. Socialism is, at its heart, an atheistic proposition. Well, you know, democracy actually provides for us the opportunity to make our own decisions. Yes. They, you know, socialism takes that opportunity away from you. You do what they say. You really don't have it anymore. But God provided democracy in the Bible. He said, choose you this day who you will serve. You know, we have the opportunity to say we want to be a, follow the Lord or we don't want to follow the Lord. But oftentimes in the socialistic type of government we're talking about, mm -hmm. they take that away, don't they? You don't choose. You have to do what they say. When there's a one-party state, like there was in Russia, a communist party, the only political party allowed, they still had elections. But the only people that you could vote for were communists. And so you have <laughs> a right. choice, but it's a... It's a, a, a mirage. You don't really have a choice. You only have a choose to choose the name of your next communist ruler right. as opposed to having a, a choice to choose what form of government you want to follow. Right. Oh, my, oh, my. I love my country, don't you? That we have the opportunity to choose not only who will serve, but who we really want to be. And there's another word out there that uh, they're using. It sounds good, too. Socialism, you know, sounds pretty good. You know, my mom used to say, now, when you go to a party, you're social and you enter in. And so that's not what socialism is at all. But they're using a term that sounds good like socialism does. Progressive. They're progressives. Now, it sounds good, but what does that exactly mean, uh, Frank? It's not good either, is it? Well, you can crack open your dictionary and recognize that progressive is a word that implies progress from one place to another. So if they're progressive, they're wanting to progress away from where we are now to what they view as a utopian form of government that would be better for all people. 
And this really highlights one of the fundamental things where socialism rests on such a shaky foundation. The scriptures make it clear that we are all sinners in the sight of God, justly deserving his displeasure, that we have fallen into sin and that sin has impacted every aspect of our lives. Socialists, by contrast, believe that man is by his nature basically good. And if we could just create the right form of government where everybody had uh, you know, a basic standard of living that was guaranteed by the government and they could do the things that they wanted to do, then they would blossom and they'd become the kind of citizens uh, that could support the socialist state. But the thing about socialism is everywhere it's been tried, it's failed. Yeah, I'm going to prove that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's because of this failure to understand human nature yes. that people will work when it's in their best interest to do so, but when the government owns everything, it's no longer in their best interest to do that, right. and so socialist state inevitably fail, and generally fail in a very bloody confl conflagration. Yes, it does. Well, let's uh, take a look at some who were going in the way of, uh, in that way of socialism, and uh, what they had to say about it. I think this next one from the New York Times is very, very interesting. I was once a socialist. Then I saw how it worked. Whoa. It's by David Brooks, and he says, Two cheers for capitalism now and forever. Going on, the Wall Street Journal, socialism is another name for disaster. Well, our guest mentioned it never works. The USSR, you know, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. And, of course, that, or well, the leader there is Russia. Look at the bottom. The Soviet state, born of a dream, dies. The end of an empire, all those countries that were combined with Russia, pulled away. They didn't want it. They wanted something else, just like our guest said. It doesn't work. And then going on, the USSR passes into history. It's no longer, of course, existing. Three nations that tried socialism and rejected it, Israel, India, and the United Kingdom. Well, you know what? They tried, <laughs> the United Kingdom tried to adopt socialism after World War II. Didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I love this next uh, statement. It's one that my husband gave, and of course, there he is, my handsome Jack Van Impey, going on here with what he had to say. And uh, I think it's very, very, very good for today, history and experience. Looking back, socialism has been tried and has failed. At this moment, the horrendous crisis in the nation of Venezuela can be attributed to its socialist government. Massive shortages of everything from food to medicine have thrown this nation in chaos with nearly everyone, particularly children suffering malnutrition, and doctors unable to save patients for the lack of the very basics of any hospital. It is a nightmare. Jack and I were in Venezuela, and at one time it was the most prosperous country in all of uh, South America. You know, they had everything, they fed their, but on our way to the airport, something happened. They had a big riot. They were trying to bring in socialism. And now it took over, of course, a while back. They can't even feed their people. It doesn't work, does it, doctor? It really doesn't. No, it, it doesn't, Rexel. And it's because we are creatures who respond to incentives. If you tell me if I work hard, I can take care of my family, I can provide for my future, I can help the poor, I can do a many, great many things. Yes. If you tell me that, I'm incentivized to work harder. If you tell me that no matter what I do, no matter how hard I work, that all of that will be not beneficial to me or to anybody else, I'm not going to be uh, motivated in any way to do that. This is the reason why young people are so confused by socialism today. They don't realize the, the impact that socialism has on innovation. You, you can cure almost any millennial of socialism if you just ask them this question. Can you do without your iPhone? Can you do without Facebook? How about Google, Twitter? How about Amazon? All of those companies that we rely on so much today 
were created because there was an incentive to innovate and there was the freedom to use your own capital to invest in your business and to grow it. Under socialism, there is no iPhone. There is no Amazon. There is no Facebook or Google or any of these innovative things because the control of capital means none of it flows to innovation. The Soviet Union, when I went into the Soviet Union after the wall fell, after the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, it looked to me like a third world country. The air, the, if you, every airport that you went to looked like something that was built in the 1950s yeah. in America because they had no motivation or incentive to try to make things better. And when there's no incentive, people respond to the absence of incentive as well. That's and, right. And everything begins to deteriorate. You talked about the Berlin Wall falling. I'm going to put a picture of the one who said, tear that wall down. <laughs> and we all know who that was, President Reagan. And he was a wonderful friend of my husband. And, uh, you know, I really like what he had to say about socialism. <laughs> Would you uh, put that on? Socialism only works in two places, heaven, where they don't need it, and hell, where they already have it. <laughs> and how true. Yeah. We don't need that uh, if you want to have a happy, wonderful life. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. This he also had to say. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we'll spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. What a great statement, President Reagan. And Dr. Adrian Rogers had this to say, oh my how powerful it is. You cannot legislate the poor into freedom by legislating the wealthy out of freedom. What one person receives without working for, another person must work for without receiving. The government cannot give anybody anything that the government does not first take from someone else. When half the people get the idea that they do not have to work because the other half's going to take care of them, and when the other half gets the idea that it does no good to work because somebody else is going to get what they work for. My dear friend, that is about the end of any nation. You cannot multiply wealth by dividing it. Oh, my word. Oh, that is so powerful and so true. You know, you can't take from someone and say, okay, everything that, that you make now, we're going to give it away. And the others say, okay, we don't have to work. That doesn't work, does it, it doctor? It, it does not. In fact, uh, it was the great political economist, Frederick Bastiat, who said, the state is a fiction where everyone tries to live at the expense of everyone else. And it reminds us, we talked earlier about Margaret Thatcher. She had a great uh, phrase. She said, the problem with socialism is sooner or later, you run out of other people's money. You mm -hmm. can't tax everybody to deliver benefits that are not sustainable by the tax base. And so uh, Dr. Rogers was right on the mark, wasn't he? He was certainly on the mark. And certainly we are facing something in our country right now where uh, socialism is becoming more and more something that people are willing to accept. And because of this, we are going to be offering you a very, very wonderful offer uh, entitled Socialism Exposed. Take a look, please, as to what is really on this DVD. I really want you to have it, friends, more than anything that I've offered in a long time. Socialism Exposed. America's infatuation with socialism is dangerous. In a socialist state, the government controls everything. Personal freedoms are surrendered, family values decimated, and your faith could even be forced underground. Yet young people are demanding socialism replace capitalism. Socialism is the transition point between capitalism and godless communism, and it is coming. Dr. Jack Benepe foresaw the new rise of socialism and wanted you to know that not only does socialism spell disaster for America, it is also a sign of the latter days. 
He left instructions and video teaching for the creation of the shocking Socialism Exposed TV special, now available on DVD. This uncut and unedited version contains significant new material we weren't allowed to air on TV. It's critical you get this information and share with friends, family, and your church. Socialism is an unbiblical system that leads to the rise of the Antichrist and the one world government predicted in Bible prophecy. Get Socialism Exposed now. Call 1-800-JVI-7777 or go to jvim.com now to order your video. Featuring Drs. Jack and Rex Sullivan Empey and expert Dr. Frank Wright, this video expose is vital to the future of our nation. You'll be helping us warn our beloved country and proclaim the hope of the gospel. A couple more things I want to add here, and that is on the DVD, you're going to be seeing so much more about what is happening in the world, maybe even in your family. We're going to be talking about God's remedy for our lives. And also, I'm going to be enclosing Jack's little booklet, Socialism Exposed, with your order. So please call or write to us right away, and we'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Very important, please make the call right away. And like I say, so much more on the DVD. And now I just want to say that before we leave you, I want to address a couple of things. That our young people today, I've strayed so far away from where maybe you were reared. Socialism, they accept very, very freely. They don't care if they go to church anymore. And because of that, so it has a reaction in their lives so much. They get depressed. They get uh, downhearted. In fact, uh, some of them even want to commit suicide. How wonderful that God gives us the answer. Jesus is the answer to depression. He's the answer to confusion. He's the answer to everything that's going on in your mind right now. Maybe you're hooked on drugs. Maybe you're hooked on alcohol. The Lord will deliver you from that. If only you'll call on him and ask the Lord to come into your life. The Lord is the answer, isn't he, Frank? No matter what's going on in a life, the Lord is the answer. He is, Rexella, because our deepest need has always been to address the separation between God and us. There's a great canyon that separates us while we're still in our sin, and yet Jesus made the bridge across that canyon so that we might know God. Amen. If you're in that place today of not really sensing the presence of God in your life, not understanding the importance of being right with God, you know, the Lord gave us a conscience for a reason. It speaks to us and tells us when we do wrong. It speaks to us in a positive way and tells us when we do right. And when it's silent, that's a, that's a message as well. Something's wrong. You don't have something to live for. And you do in Christ. The first step every one of us needs to make is to recognize that we're sinners in the sight of God, that we so very much need a Savior. I gave my life to Christ 40 years ago, and I'm even more conscious today of how much I need the, the saving forgiveness of the Lord Jesus. If you recognize in your own life today that you're a sinner in the sight of God, then you need to claim the promises of God, where he says that the grace of God is given to those who believe and they receive eternal life. The scripture says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you need to recognize that there's nothing you can do to earn the favor of God. And it's not been designed that way. Jesus came so that you could know God, you could have your sins forgiven, and you could have everlasting life. Everlasting life living in the presence of the Most High God. It's almost incomprehensible to think about that, that the Lord who stands astride the galaxies has made a place for us to dwell with Him forever. And He's coming back. He's coming back soon. 
and he's coming back to gather unto himself those that belong to him. Are you one of those? Do you belong to Christ? You can. You can by acknowledging your need of him and praying this simple prayer. If you'd like to know Christ and like to have him in your life, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I am a sinner. And I know that you are a just and holy God who has promised to punish sin. But by your grace, you have offered an atonement in your body and in your blood. You died and you rose again from the dead that my sins can be taken away. Lord, I pray that you would accept me on the basis of your merits, on the basis of your blood shed for me. Receive me today as I give my heart to you. Come into my life. Make me the man or woman of God that you want me to be. Lord Jesus, save me. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Did you pray that prayer? Will you please write to me or call me? I'd love to send you this little book on Absolutely Free First Steps in a new direction. You don't have to be hooked on alcohol or anything, uh, some kind of a drug. The Lord will deliver you. First steps in a new direction. I love it. Our mailing address is Jack Benjamin Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. And uh, here's our announcer to tell you once again how you can receive the wonderful offer of the week, Socialism Exposed. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend to order Socialism Exposed. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I do want to encourage you, make the call or write to me right away. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you, and also I'll be sending you this little booklet that Jack did, Socialism Exposed. You need to have it. I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. Are you down? Well, the quickest way to get back on your feet is to get down on your knees. How very, very true. We'll look forward to being in your home again, trusting very soon with another special. May God bless you and keep looking up because the Lord is coming very soon. We'll look forward to that time we can be with you. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.